get your opponent dead. That's magic. You hit your opponent and you get him dead. That's that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Hmm. Self-reflection time. I did some letter of challenges. I stick by them. To my favorite arena creators. That's good enough, right? Good enough for now. <clears throat> 1,000 subscribers. How many? How many? Uh, how many am I at right now? Oof. Oh, that's a that's a rough number. That's a rough number. Well, I guess I'll uh, need to get some more content. Quit worrying about sideboarding. Sideboarding is easy, all right? It's all about ratios. What do you do? This is generally every single card in Historic that you really need to worry about for sideboard for the color white. Not mixed, not colorless, just white. Here we go. Somebody has, somebody's trying to aggro you down, all right? But you know they're low on creature-based removal and you know they're gonna sideboard out their creature-based removal. Sideboard out uh, Soul Warden. It'll postpone you. It'll, it'll, this, this card will give you a couple extra turns. Hushbringer, pretty self-explanatory. All right, it fixes a lot of stuff in the format or uh, it, it, it answers a lot of stuff in the format, but it also makes Uros come in as six sixes. They don't get the effect, but they come in as six sixes. When an Uro tax and a Hushbringer is still on the battlefield, it triggers because it's an attack trigger. It's no longer an enter the battlefield trigger. Skyclave Cleric is actually really nice. If you have a land-based, uh, maybe like Bant type strategy or Azorius type strategy, it's good to uh, maybe have some of these in the main deck, a couple extras in the sideboard. This is actually turning out to be a really nice card. Timely Reinforcements is a catch-all when it comes to answering aggressive decks. Three bodies? Six lives. That's a lot. That's a lot. Archons of Sun's Grace gains you a lot of life and makes some bodies if you're into enchantments. Spot removal. This is fine. It's not It's not my recommendation, but there's plenty of stuff like this. It makes things indestructible, gives it hexproof, but I'm just saying this type of effect in general, one mana answer spot removal, is generally useful. Then, there, then you get into the two mana answers. Well, this one has flash, but you're asked to be attacking. Well, this one exiles it and scries you, but it has to be either black or red. Then you have the glass casket. Enters the battlefield three or less mana that's not always going to work in historic elder gargonons are running around how do you get 1000 subscribers am i going to continue playing this character while i make this content no this character is very exhausting but I do wear sunglasses uh, because I had LASIK surgery. And honestly, bright uh, bright lights have affected my eyes. <laughs> and then uh, I'm currently sitting right here with the sun directly pouring at me old peepers right here. So that's why I tend to wear the shades. Also, it's a lot easier to put on a facade. Content break. So this is the category of pressure. This is what you want to be sideboarding in when you want to apply more pressure in the second and third games of a best of three. So if you're creature based, you know, sometimes giving your creatures plus one plus one for one mana at an instant speed wins you the game or similar effects like this. Unbreakable formation does it at sorcery speed, but it also makes everything indestructible. And I can't tell you how many games I've won by somebody playing Wrath of God and then I just sideboarded in my unbreakable formation and held on to it because I'm smart. Gideon Blackblade, it's a body that doesn't die to wrath effects, but it does die to heavy creature-based decks. So I tend to not like either of these Gideons in the main deck. Pick pick your flavor is what I say. You know, I tend to lean more towards Blackblade if I want lifelink out of my creatures, and I lean more towards Gideon of the Trials if, I, if I'm playing a different type of strategy. I don't know. I actually think Gideon Blackblade is the better option. There's an argument to be had for this guy that he, he blinks a couple turns. Felidar Retreat, I think, is the value sideboard card of the format right now. It's an enchantment. Enchantments are generally hard to deal with if you're going against black, if you're going against blue, it's generally hard for those colors to deal with enchantments. If you're going against red as well, this, you just play lands and make creatures. That's it. That's all you do. It doesn't do anything when it hits the battlefield, and that's unfortunate, but it's eternal value, and I think Philidar Retreat is going to turn out well. With goblins, 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 goblins running around in Historic right now, Briard Stewart, uh, Stewart of the Aggrieve. I think there's an argument. See a little bit of play. It doesn't seem too bad. Give it a shot. This is the removal part. Oh, you're going to move over here. This is the removal combo. I think these are really the two best options we have in the removal category. Ixalan's Binding. You can go three mana removal, but I think if you start doing that, then you're going to drift over into this, uh, into these type of cat, into this type of category or this type of category. I think this is sufficient enough. This is sort of the best enchantment removal we have in the format. It's good. Ixalan's Binding is really good if you land on the right target and they can't respond to it, like in a Grixis deck. Mm -mm. Mono black. Nope. Red. 
Negative. Hazaret, you want to try to deal some more damage? Nope. Can't even play it. Okay, so this is the Wrath category. Obviously, the Wrath category is because of this card. Wrath of God destroys all creatures. They can't be regenerated. That's good. That's good. Don't play Shadow of the Sky. I don't know why someone would play Shadow of the Sky instead of Wrath of God. The clause where it says they can't be regenerated uh, is basically the most unimportant piece of literature on Magic the Gathering Arena. There, there's no creature that has keyword regeneration <laughs> in Magic the Gathering Arena. I don't think. Prove me wrong. It, it, I, I think. I think. Don't don't quote me on that. But this is this is the this is the original just destroy all creatures type of card, and I liked that they brought it back in. So. Don't play Shadow of the Sky. Why are you? Why do you want to kill your own four mana, four toughness creature? Anyway, it's it's. Did you, did your plan get out of hand? It's a very niche scenario that this is actually a good card. The art's still amazing though. Art still looks good. Scuttle the wreckage is the second place when it comes to board wipes. However, the tell for Scuttle the wreckage is pretty obvious. Untap four mana, two two white mana symbols open. The tell, the, the tell for Settle the Wreckage is pretty, pretty telling. Cleansing Nova is also a good option, but it's mainly for the artifacts and enchantment subtext. That's about it. That's about what it is. Run two, three copies, maybe, if you really, really don't want to deal with artifacts or enchantment. Or just Planar Cleansing if you just want to wipe the entire board. I would not recommend Planar Cleansing above Cleansing Nova. I would recommend Cleansing Nova first because it's it's five mana. Five, the difference between five and six mana is actually pretty drastic. The difference between one and two mana is tiny. The difference between two mana and three mana is actually drastic and then it only gets worse going up from there when it comes to these fast type formats i don't know how much time i want to sink into this game it's really fun i do love playing magic i've been playing magic for about 15 years so far ever since i was youngling did tournaments that was fun remember back when scg was a thing that was that was fun i've been playing magic for a long time i've be, i've mainly been a modern slash standard slash commander player but a long time ago all my cards Cards got stolen up, so I no longer play modern anymore because my entire collection just disappeared. <clears throat> now I play Magic: The Gathering Arena. Same concept, same game, same rules, different format. Magic doesn't change as you switch towards formats. The only difference is is that cards are cheaper and they do better things. That's about it. You gain life, you draw cards, you exile stuff, you do whatever. Different format, same effects, different ways to go about it. This entire category is a pick your poison of enchantment and artifact removal. All right, one mana instant speed, destroy target enchantment. Bam, easy day. Two mana instant speed, artifact or enchantment. All right, easy day as well. This is if you want to be fast. This, Sorry, this is if you want to deal with enchantments fast. This is if you want to deal with both of them at two mana. It's not that bad. Revoke existence. I don't think exiling is going to be that big of a thing unless uh, mono white Heliod starts to be come a lot more popular. I don't know. I don't think this thing's ever going to get popular. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Three mana, gain four life. See the... F <laughs> it's instant speed, but the four life is negated by the fact that it costs three mana. I would like to be doing a lot more powerful stuff on three mana. So I'm actually going to put this in sideboard. I'll talk about my sideboard in a second. Heliod's Intervention is honestly the best one in this entire category. It gains you life, it destroys artifacts and enchantments, it's I sideboarding in against most things. If I ever have white in my deck and I have enough mana symbols to viably tell myself I can play this card, I'm playing a Heliod's Intervention in the sideboard. <laughs> this is the counter specific thing category. Deafening Silence. Each player can't cast more than one non-creature spell each turn. Uh, if the format gets that fast, yeah. If the format, well, you know, Neoform is Neoform spell spell caster or something. I don't know the there's a there's a four there's a two card combo that's really kicking off right now. So this thing might be this thing might become popular sometime soon if there's not a ban. If there's not a ban. Containment Priest, same thing. This is probably preferable over Deafening Science because it has flash, and it is a body. It's a body. It hits people in the face. You deal, you deal damage to the face. That's how you win games. It already, it already makes sure that you know they're not bringing any weird creatures onto the battlefield. Hit him in the face a little bit. Rune Halo answers niche questions that you have that you just need the answer for the fall of thran if land ever becomes popular this is mainly like a wishboard style of sideboard card i wouldn't like i wouldn't sideboard this in but i would keep it in the sideboard if you had a wishboard type strategy 
And I want to talk about these two cards right here. Thalia, Guardian of Throbrin. Throbin, Throban, Throb, Throb, Throbobin, Throbin, Thrumpin, Thrumbiosis. I don't know. Two mana, Legendary Human Soldier, two on first strike. Those stats were already pretty crispy as it was, and then BAM! Non-creature spells cost one more to cast. <clears throat> that is a card right there. You know what you do? You know what you do? You you sideboard out your high-costed mana stuff. You hit them early on the board. You bring in Thalia. You bring in your... Okay, all of those are... You bring in a Skycleave. You do, you do the early game stuff, and then you hit them in the face. You just... <clears throat> Get your opponent dead. That's magic. You hit your opponent and you get him dead. And then rest in peace is the best sideboard card ever. Without question, best sideboard card you'd ever done seen. You'd ever done seen. Exiling every single card from a graveyard? That's that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And it enters the battlefield. And even if they remove rest in peace, their li- their, their, their graveyard, their resource... Is already exiled. They have to rebuild. It's already late in the game. They gotta catch up. Rest in peace is good. I mean, Tormon script is too, but this one's prettier. Okay, these are cards to stay away from. Okay, like these are cards you probably don't want to be like. If you have them in your sideboard, it's because of, like a very very niche deck that uh, that 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 needs a certain type of response. Or these are like very baity sideboard cards. They feel like really good sideboard cards, but they actually don't do anything so draineth magistrate your opponent can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hand like it's this there's no strong deck right now that really wants to run this card because it's two mana it's there's no strong deck that really wants to run it right now this is probably the one that's edging the most between being side sideboard and an actual (laughs) and an actual sideboard contender because it does have three toughness that's the that's the only thing i really give to this card is that it has three toughness everything else your opponent cast can't cast spells anywhere other than their hands so you mean graveyards and libraries that's that's very niche maybe you bring it in against goblins i don't know eidolon of obstruction this is the baitiest of cards like it looks so good on the outside but it's actually really bad it feels like athalia but athalia answers the placement of playwalkers of planeswalkers this answers the fact that they're using their abilities this is not a good card in comparison to thalia thalia is still the better option hands down even mind sensor feels baity i don't know it's a flyer it's a two one it got used in some mono white sideboards back in modern and back in legacy but i don't i don't know if it's if it has a home in historic there's not enough deck searching in historic city wide burst oh this feels all oh, i killed all my opponent's creatures oh for three mana come on man two white mana symbols Nah, you ain't gonna get me on this one. It's not good enough. It, there's no format that really has four mana plus creatures right now that this is really good in. Uh, older format guys, maybe. Uh, but currently right now, three mana to destroy all creatures with four or greater. It's not that impactful of an effect. You'd rather have a four mana, you, you know, Wrath of God in the sideboard than that. Uh, invoke the Divine. This is one I had in the sideboard... Where was it? Tenyo, honestly, this this looks like a really, really fun, really, really good sideboard card. It is mostly not good. It It's three mana gain five life is what this is. You have Hexproof, so they just target the Tenyo. It's three mana gain five life. That's that's really all it is. Three Or it's three mana gain three life and get a three, three. Is that good? Is that good? I don't know. It, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think this format's ready. I don't think burn is that prevalent right now. I think goblins are more annoying. Elspeth, Suns, and nemesis this is a bait don't play this it's four mana to go minus in loyalty it doesn't stay on the battlefield you don't just keep on making more creatures no you go minus in loyalty you play this more of a mid the the idea is that you play this in like a mid-range type strategy and you give two creatures plus plus four plus two and, and you give plus four plus two worth of stats that sounds pretty nice but in practicality it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't curve out well but four mana to give two creatures plus two plus one that's not a bad intro ability if you want to try some sort of trample or first strike type of deck it's not completely inviable this is in the sideboard but it's also kind of edging mainboard because there's very weird circumstances in which you might need both of these abilities <laughs> i don't i can't tell you what it is but this this might be a valuable card in the future angel of destiny avoid baneslayer angel lyra enjoy you know 
don't delve into these creature-based lifelink strategies because you're, you just need to survive the early game and hit your opponent most of the time. Maybe if you're playing control and you stabilize, you can play out a Baneslayer or a Lyra, but definitely don't play Angel of Destiny or Celestial Mantle. These are just big o' baits. Big o', big o' baitums. And that's it. That's it. Magic's easy. Sideboarding's easy. All right, so this, is, this is basically what you need to worry about for Wyatt and Sideboard. Questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the freaking comments comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Have a good day.